Welcome everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you how to create a sliding mechanic for your game complete with some on-screen speed effects and some animations to move around the camera. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is come to our player scene here and we want to add an animation player node so that we can start to animate. Next thing we're going to do is create a new animation track, I'm going to call it slide because it's a slide. Now I'm going to set the time to 0 0.4 because we don't want it, the animation to take too long. And the first thing we're going to do is select the thing that we're going to animate. In this case, it's going to be the head because it contains the player's camera, which is the thing we're going to need to move. Now, we want to create a keyframe for the translation over here. Now, if you press this button, it'll create a keyframe and a new track for the prom property translation. And it'll also create a reset track to like reverse it once we're done with it. Now, once we have this keyframe at its default value, or whatever value we have it at right now, we're going to move the playhead over to the end of the animation, and we're going to set this value to something lower, for example, negative one and this will just move the head and the camera down so it'll look like your character is like ducking down to get into a sliding position from the first person perspective we've got to keyframe this again and then as you can see the animation moves it down now we're also going to want to move it back as well and if we want to just edit this keyframe we can click on it and we can change the value and if I put value of 10 on the z-axis, it will not only move it down, but it will move it back. This will be, it will create the effect of the field of view widening. And it will just give the animation a little bit more juice. We're actually going to see that the mesh here is blocking the view. So what we want to do is move the mesh as well. And with the same thing as before, we're just going to create a keyframe for translation. At zero, we're going to keyframe it to what it usually is. And coming over here to the keyframe at four, we're going to change the z-axis to 10, just like with the head. And as you can see, the mesh and the uh, camera move together to make sure that it doesn't block the player's view. Now that we have that animation sorted, we can head over to the code. And as you can see here, we've come over to the player script into the physics process function. Now, you're going to want to have a button for sliding. Here, I've used control. If you don't have one, just type in like slide here, add it there, and uh, it'll create one, press the press key and physical key, and then press the control, and it'll create a input map for you. The next thing we're going to do is create some particles, so particle node, and then we shall come over to the draw passes. We're going to want a new cube mesh for this, and we're going to want to change the shape of this cube mesh. But before that, we're going to make sure we have a process material. We want it to be a particles material. And as you can see, when we do that, it starts to make some particles. But it's not exactly the effect that we were looking for, so we're going to have to change some settings in here. Um, turning off gravity. Having, let's see, we're not going to want any spread either. The initial velocity will be something like a hundred and we're going to come over to the direction and change it to the z direction or whichever direction is backwards for your particular case we are also going to want to change the emission shape to a ring what that's going to do is instead of just the particles generating in a line they're going to generate in a ring shape and what we're doing now is actually creating the speed effect, like the effect of the wind blowing in your face as you're 
is you're accelerating. And to do that, we're going to want to make some changes to the ring radius. Uh, if we make it something like this, the ring starts to become a little more visible. If I add more of these, you can sort of see the ring shape, but it'll be more evident once we change the shape of these cubes here, because it's obviously not what we want. We want to scale these on the z-axis. And there we can see we've got some lines happening. This is what we want, but not quite that long. That is looking better, of course. We bump this up to 200. It's more clear what we're looking at. And we want the ring to be slightly smaller. Like so. And of course, we need to account for the fact that the camera is going to move downwards. So we'll move this down to around the base of the model where it will be visible if the camera is moved downwards. And we'll move it forward a bit just to make sure that we're going to be able to see this. Turn it meeting off because we don't want that to be on my default. Now we want to make sure that we have a reference to the particles. And um, I'm going to create a reference here on ready var particles equals get node particles. Now that we have that, we can come down into our code and go particles dot emitting equals true. And uh, all that's going to do is in our particles, it's going to set this emitting here to true. Then after that is action just pressed slide. We want to check if the player is connected to the floor. And if they are, only then we will allow the speed to be increased. Now make sure that your player does have a variable called speed. It could be called velocity or something. But uh, here I have var speed. It's used in the movement calculations. If you don't have a variable for speed on your player, it might not work for you. So you might have to change it a little bit. Uh, we're also going to increase the jump power. Uh, again, this is just the name for my jump variable. And here you can see it's a uh, var jump. Yours could be called something different. So upon the release of the button, uh, and then that play reset. And that'll just make sure it resets the animation once we finish sliding. Uh, we also want to make sure that the particles stop emitting, the speed goes back to normal, so that's whatever the original value was, and the jump power goes back to normal once we release it. With all that set up, the effect should be something similar to this. And hopefully we'll have higher jump power, we'll have higher speed, and we'll have the particles looking all nice on our screen. Now, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like. Uh, leave a comment if you want some suggestions on future videos. This video was actually suggested by one of my viewers who I'll put the name of on screen. So if you want to see your suggestion in a future video, then make sure to leave a comment. If you want more videos like this, you know the deal. Subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for making it this far. I really appreciate it. See ya.